in Sutter, I'm from Switzerland and apart from my head, I'm mostly known for my work as speed painter artist. Usually a speed painting takes me around 5 minutes, but for that painting I will take a little bit longer. I will paint a person that inspires me in my artistic life and I will integrate symbols that represent some of my life's mottos. And here already is my first one, always try to keep it simple. So let's go! That's Yayo Kusama, a Japanese artist, mostly famous for her polka dots. I admire her a lot both for her arts, but also for the courage that she's had as a young female Japanese artist to travel to New York and invest all she's had into her arts career. When it comes to Yayo Kusama, her art and her personality are totally melted. What I also admire about her is that she's managed to turn something that could have been a handicap into what I would call a life's purpose. Already as a child she suffered from hallucinations and she's using those elements in her arts. So now I will talk a little bit about the symbols that I've incorporated in the background. Let's start with the violin. That's been the first artistic thing that I've done in my life. People often ask me how I became an artist and really they even give the answer themselves and that goes like so you've always been good at painting, right? But actually that's not really the case. It's more like the combination of an overflow of thoughts and an overflow of emotions, which kind of created some chaos. And then sooner or later you're gonna realize that you have to find a way to canalize all that. And for me, art is the best way to do so. So that happened to me at the age of four, yes. I went to my parents and told them 
that I wanted to play the violin and they were like, okay. So let's first find somebody to show you what a violin actually is. It's taken like forever, but when I turned five, I finally could take my first violin lessons. What it really stands for is a metaphor that I often use in my life and maybe it works for you as well. So if you imagine like a really beautiful piece of music and it's played by a violin out of tune, it sounds like horrible. But what happens if you bring the violin back in tune? Usually it doesn't even take a lot and it's back in tune. To me this is like a great metaphor for life because sometimes we think like oh everything is horrible, it's not in harmony at all and you kind of want to run away and change everything. In the end you just have to change a few little things to get the harmony back. Here we have another one, it's a smiling face and this represents the big question of the sense of life. That's a question that I ask myself a lot at the age of 15, 16. And I came to the conclusion that life doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> it sounds hard, but I compare it to a face. A face doesn't just smile, it's us to make it smile. So that's how I see life. It doesn't make sense, but we can give our life a sense. It wasn't really fun at that time, but now, today, I'm quite glad that I've asked myself that question as early, because it forced me to actively do something about it. The palm tree, the same topic, because my crisis actually started when I realized that I will die one day, so why build up everything when I know that in the end it's not gonna last. Many adult people just told me, yeah, you're young, just enjoy your life, but it's not really what helped me. So I always had to come up with all those metaphors. This one stands for vacation. I thought, come on, everybody likes vacations, even though they don't last forever. I think it's the same about life. We'd better enjoy it. This is a theory that I'd come up when I'd been asked to take part in Switzerland's Got Talent. So before I decided if I wanted to take part, actually I had to know what is a talent because it's all the same like ability. Ability is like three dimensional and talent is only like one dimension. So talent, training and time, that's the three dimensions. You don't get anywhere with only talent. But now that I knew what a talent is, it's been clear to me that I would to caricatures. At that time I've been a professional caricaturist. That's why I had to come up with something totally new. Otherwise I figured it wouldn't be authentic. That's why I decided to do a speed painting. A rather crazy idea because I've done something totally new directly in Swiss TV and it even went viral afterwards. So that's actually how my career as a speed painting artist started. Here is another formula. You see, I like formulas. This is the formula of the 4D. This formula I created for a video in which I should talk about dreams. I figured it's really important to have a dream because it gives your life direction and drive. With the absence of those three, we have the fourth D, it's depression. But actually, I don't like that, so I'm just gonna erase it. That's the nice thing about art. Up here, it's actually upside down. This represents the importance of family. So that's also why I built my art house next to the house we're living in. So I can organically switch in between those two worlds. And that provides some flow. So this is the flow. I've already mentioned the overflow before, the overflow of thoughts and emotions, which can be something hard to deal with. But as it forces me to do art, it kind of creates flow. So flow is a state that I hope everybody knows. It's when you forget about time and space. One of my favorite feelings, I don't always have it when I do art, but often when I do art and I'm not disturbed, then it happens that I get into this state of flow and then things just happen automatically. I've talked about dream drive direction before, but uh, during the pandemic, I've had some issues because 
I lost all my jobs. It was like a fast car driving in a wall. Suddenly had to ask myself, so what is my dream now for that time? So during the pandemic, this theory didn't work out anymore, so I had to come up with some alternative. And this was... After the pandemic, I had to ask myself, so which one shall I go on now? Shall I just like live in the moment and, and quit this driven life? So should it be more like doing meditation all day long? Stop being that ambitious? and always reaching for new aims and always pushing myself should I just like really live in the moment and spend as much time in the nature as I could and just taking the artistic jobs that I get naturally and not pushing the limits anymore but that's not really me so I have been quite in a dilemma until the day that I found this it's just this symbol it's this symbol I found it in a tray what I like about it is like you can see either dots, lines, or you can see circles. So I figured that I don't have to decide. It's totally fine to just switch from one to the other, and it's a good thing not to have to decide. Here, you can see just holes. And those represent constructive boredom. I think this is a really important theory for nowadays because we are always surrounded by technique and devices. Boredom is like my secret superpower because whenever I'm bored it kind of provokes me and then I always come up with the best ideas. Those elements, plus and minus. This is the concept of double compensation. As a student, whenever we had a bad grade, we had to double compensate that. So this wasn't really fun as a student, but I used that concept later on in my life. So whenever I look back, I can actually say that some negative experiences have been the sources of very important decisions that I made later on. And here, here we have the monkey. This is the title of my speech. There is a monk in every monkey. I make a little bit fun of myself. Because I'm a little bit of a hyperactive person, I always have to do something and I cannot really just sit still. So I will give my best to bring out my inside monk now and then and to not just talk about all those visions but also to live them. So maybe a few of my metaphors have been interesting for you too. If so, I'm always happy to read from you. And now I wish you all the very best and thanks a lot for watching.